to the lesson, check the description box below in your YouTube player for tabs and backing tracks on my website, information about these sound tools I'm using today, and links to other goodies via my Patreon page. Continuing. Okay, so the essential progression that I'm summarizing ha, 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 is A minor, D minor, E, A minor, F, E, F, E. This is a progression I've had, oh, floating around, uh, gosh, probably since like the year 2000. So, first thing I wanted to do when I Andy summarized it, I put in a minor nine chord. Already, that's a very Andy Summers chord. Minor nines, minor sevens, minor or seven sus fours are all things you'll catch him doing. So that opening A minor nine chord is, here we are up at the 12th fret on the A, 12, 10, 12, 12. By the way, this beautiful guitar is for sale at blackmoonguitars.com. My friend Robert made it. I like it a lot. All right, there's our first piece. And then I put a little melodic connector just because it was, I don't know, it came to me. That's not really Andy Summers, but it's nice. A little on the B string, 10, 9. Here comes a D, minor 7, sus4. Very Andy Summers choice. Yeah, you'll catch him do those as well. So that is, if we start with a D minor shape here at our 5th fret standard bar chord, Remove the pinky, that turns into a minor seven. Put the pinky out on the eighth fret there of our B string, that gives us a seven sus four. Very cool. Now, on the E seven that's coming up, or the E, that's kind of getting into another thing that I'll see him do. So he'll do big glassy chords, but he'll also kind of arpeggiate things, you know, intermittently or depending on the part of the song, pre-chorus, chorus, and, and things like that. So I am visualizing this E7 chord, which is our, our Born on the Bayou E7, but I'm only going to aim for 6th fret of the D, 5th fret of the B, so there's a gap. And again, I'm kind of playing around melodically with that. Get that seven, get that five, seven. And here comes an A minor. Again, yep, I, these are all like choices I catch him do. <laughs> choices I catch him do. The Eric Haugen story. So if this is an A minor, I'm going to reduce it to the upper part. That's right, I just played Stairway to Heaven on my YouTube channel. All right, 7, 5, 5. Pinky's going to get 7 there of the G. To give us that little pretty passage. Nice. And then it goes back up. Now, when it's going to get to F, you have an F here, you have an F here, you have an F here, an F here. Again, I, I know all my shapes. Here's an F major 7. I love this grab of F. So if this is the caged F that's shaped like a C, 8, 7, 5, 6. We're going to go ahead and take that top F and push him back to be an E, so I'm barred out with my index finger. That's a great chord. If you don't know it, know it. Another one of my Hauganisms. And then I switch to the, the chops. That's another thing that, you know, I guess he got from reggae because that was kind of popular when the police were coming up. So, yeah, you got one, two, three, four. Now, to get that attack, you can go up to, you're going to, I'm not holding. I'm only pressing when I'm strumming. And I may even catch it after. So it's like a squeeze, catch, squeeze, catch. And then we're going back to this E7 here, and I'm doing something. I haven't heard him do this specific trick, but this is, you know, just my extrapolation of some of the stuff he does. I'm thinking of that same Born on the Bayou E7, but I'm going to sus for it, which is that 7th fret, that A note. 
that's pretty. Very, very glassy Andy Summers thing to do. So you can see that 7775 seven, goes around again. And then instead of doing the 7 sus 4 here, I just move it up to, if this is E, you know, 7999. Nine, nine, nine. Here's E7. Backing that one in. Sus 4 it by putting the pinky out in front. There we go. That's, that's the kind of the first time through the progression. Then, it wouldn't be an Andy Summers lesson without the Andy Summers chord. Hello. Very few guitar players have signature chords that they've left their mark on the world. Jimi Hendrix has his 7 sharp 9 chord. Andy Summers has his... I guess you'd call that an add 9 omit 3. I don't know. I call it the Andy Summers chord. And it's a tough one for those of you who have pinky troubles. My heart goes out to you because it is hard. 5, 7, 9. Matt Gilbert, I know that this is tough for you. I'm sorry. 5, 7, 9. Out there. There we go. Now notice I am not doing power chord and then pinky out. I think it's a little easier on our hand for it to be those three. And of course, my thumb is not up here trying to do this. It's not going to happen. Now, and palm muting. I mean, this is, you know, it's straight out of that. Uh, every breath you take. The, the, the weirdest stalker song that <laughs> became popular. It's a great song, a beautiful melody, but it's creepy lyrics. But yeah, so I mean, I'm coming around again. You know, this chord subs in for an A major or A minor. So there's our arpeggiation. And then the beat drops, which is also something the police would do. You know, you can't really do an Andy Summers lesson, I think I'm on screen, hi, without talking about Stuart Copeland. And Sting, to be fair, the three of those guys, the way they played is why the police, you know, each one of them separately, not the same as how they are together. Um, so, yeah, the, you know, kind of start off one way and then, yeah, th like the police will kick into like they'll drive. You know, Andy Summers will sometimes also just do power chords and Stuart will just do backbeat stuff aside from his crazy like punk reggae stuff that he does. So it's trucking. The beat drops. That is a D minor. So this is kind of copping the. Was that, is that in, is that? Is that do, do, do? Yeah, so I'm thinking of do, 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 da, da, da for this kind of. arpeggiation stuff that he'll do. So if that was our A minor chord, our D minor is still here. So I'm kind of doing a weird inversion of it. Five, 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 eight, which is, I guess that's technically second inversion. Here comes an E in first inversion, which is just an octave lower version of that thing I did earlier. Four, two, four. Uh, again, sorry for um, folks with um, tight pinkies. Five, three, five. And then, you know, if we had this A minor, I'm just doing it down low. Five, five, and four. And then back around again. So that's business. And I knew I kind of wanted to get to a lower E7, so I'm going to do a strange, this is an A, no, sorry, an A, an F, major 7, second inversion. Three, three, five, five, and actually you're allowed if you want. If you hit that glassy third fret, that makes it a major 9 chord. Pretty cool. And then I just do an E7 
sus4 in the open position, here's E. Here's E7, here's E7 with a sus4. Resolving to proper E7, so yeah, O2, O2. Golly, that's pretty. And then I close it out with an A sus2, O2200. Very cool. To review some of the, to summarize, um, we have minor nine chords. Those are cool, not just for Andy Summers, but he sure likes to use those. We have minor seven and dominant seven bar chords with the possibility of adding a sus to them. That's definitely an Andy Summers kind of thing. Um, we have, you know, the kind of reggae style hitting on the backbeat, uh, clank, clank, clank. That's an Andy Summers thing. Then we also have the muted arpeggiations of interesting chord structures. That's also an Andy Summers thing. I think, yeah, that's all that's encapsulated in that little kind of uh, uh, recapitulation of that chord progression. Is that a word? I don't even know. Take your time with it if you like it. Um, hopefully it will inspire you to make up some Andy Summers style stuff of your own. Good luck.